Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today we're starting a new Let's Talk Lore series titled The Greatest Warrior Lü Bu, as we look to cover the life of this legendary warrior of the Three Kingdoms period. And in the first part of the six-part series titled Origins, we'll explore Lü Bu's origins and discuss his tenure serving under his first boss, Ding Yuan. Now, as we kick off this series, I want to first clarify that the material covered in this series will be historical rather than based off romance, as one of the main purposes of this series is to dispel the mythical and often superhuman nature of Lü Bu that we see in popular culture. As historically speaking, Lü Bu might have been a great fighter, but he was definitely not a great general as his military record would speak for itself as we proceed in the series. Now, born in the county of Jiuyuan, in the commandery of Wuyuan, which sits in the northern province of Bin, Lü Bu was not born into any notable clans, and thus much of his youth is unrecorded in history. We do not know his birth year, but through comparisons made in other sources, such as the fact that Liu Bei, refer to Lü Bu as his senior, we are certain Lü Bu was born before the year 161, or Liu Bei's birth year. As for how much before, we really have no clue. But regardless, his first appearance in the history books would happen in 189, when it was recorded that Lü Bu was serving as the Zhu Bu of Ding Yuan's army. Now Zhu Bu as a position is the modern day equivalent of an army secretary in charge of managing the paperwork for the commanding officer. In this case, that commanding officer was Ding Yuan, who was the current prefect of the Bin province and the lieutenant of the Imperial Cavalry. Now, before serving in this role, Lü Bu was a regular foot soldier in the Bin province garrison. But given the frontier nature of the Bin province, Lü Bu grew up on the horseback and was a skilled archer. Combined with his physical prowess, he was handpicked by Ding Yuan once Ding Yuan had became the prefect of the Bin province in 188. Now this date is actually quite important and often neglected in many analyses of Lü Bu's betrayal of Ding Yuan. As if we first take a look at Ding Yuan, who was born in the Taishan commandery in the east, to a poor family, without any background, he had only been recently assigned to the Bin province as its prefect. Prior to his assignment here, he was a county-level official in the south, known for his brashness and fighting prowess against bandits. And he got his promotion in 188 because the prior prefect of the Bin province, Zhang Yi, had died in a nomadic attack as the Bin province was a frontier province under constant threat from southern Xiongnu and Xianbei tribes. And it was not a hot job, as it was not only unsafe, it was also not very lucrative, since the Bin province was also one of the poorest northern provinces. Therefore, Ding Yuan, who did not have any strong family background or connections to land him an easier job, but was known to be a reckless bandit killer, ended up receiving this promotion as the prefect of the Bin province. And knowing that he was headed into this hostile environment, Ding Yuan started to pick strong men for his entourage, which featured Lü Bu as his Zhu Bu, or the head secretary, followed by Zhang Liao and Zhang Yang as Cong Shi, which basically translates into followers. Now just to clarify, Zhang Liao and Zhang Yang are not related, despite having the same surname. And the two of them were also handpicked by Ding Yuan because of their strength and display of bravery. But despite the fact that all three of these men owe their promotions to their new boss Ding Yuan, they were not terribly close to him, as he was an outsider, which follows the Han rule that prefix must come from another province to prevent the possibility of local rebellions. And in this case, Ding Yuan, who was born in the Xu province out in the east and had served in the Jin province in the south, is now airdropped in this northern frontier province of Bin. So it was only natural that the end result 
is that the three men handpicked by Ding Yuan ended up bonding with each other as Lü Bu, Zhang Liao, and Zhang Yang all became close friends during this period. Now, Ding Yuan did take a particular liking to Lü Bu, as it was stated that he made extra efforts to befriend him, and Zhu Bu, or the head secretary, was definitely a higher ranking position than Cong Shi. But there is also no records that Ding Yuan actually became Lü Bu's yi fu, or adopted father. Now, the term yi fu is badly translated in my opinion as adopted father, as I feel it's closer to godfather rather than your adopted father in terms of meaning. But the truth is, Ding Yuan and Lü Bu never had this relationship, as Lü Bu had only been serving Ding Yuan for roughly a year when Ding Yuan was summoned to the capital by He Jin, as He Jin prepared to make his moves against the eunuchs. Now obviously, when Ding Yuan marched his forces to the capital of Luoyang following He Jin's summon after Emperor Ling's death, Lü Bu, as his head secretary, would have accompanied him to the capital. But prior to this move, Ding Yuan had actually already sent Zhang Liao and Zhang Yang into the capital in late 188, before Emperor Ling's death. Now, in late 188, the emperor formed his own personal army called the Eight Captains of the West Palace, which we have mentioned multiple times before in our other lore series. And the eight captains included the likes of Yuan Shao and Cao Cao. While we tend to focus on the leaders of these armies, the armies itself is also made up of regular troops. And to get these troops, recruitment quotas were given out to nearby provinces as they were all required to provide troops for this new army of the emperor. And it was during this time that Ding Yuan had actually sent Zhang Liao and Zhang Yang to the capital to serve in the eight captains of the West Palace. So in reality, Zhang Liao and Zhang Yang never served very long under Ding Yuan and also ended up getting their first glimpse of Yuan Shao and Cao Cao while serving in this force. Now this force itself didn't exist very long as following Emperor Ling's death in mid-189, the leader of the eight captains, who was a trusted eunuch named Jian Shuo, was given an impossible mission by the emperor on his deathbed, as the emperor wanted to use the army to endorse his second son, Liu Xie, to become the next emperor. However, this was extremely difficult, as the Grand General He Jin was the brother of Empress He, who was the mother of the first son, Liu Bian. And obviously, they would want Liu Bian to succeed the throne, which also had widespread support of the court as the custom of the eldest born ascension was the common practice of the time. But Jian Shuo gave it his best as he attempted to assassinate He Jin. Unfortunately, his fellow eunuchs, led by the Ten Eunuchs organization, ended up selling him out to Empress He and He Jin, as he was soon killed and Liu Bian became emperor. And his death would also see the disbandment of the eight captains of the West Palace, as it was dissolved into the imperial army under He Jin's command, which is why when Lü Bu betrays Ding Yuan in the future and joins Dong Zhuo, there have been people in the past who have asked me why Zhang Liao, who seems like an honorable man, would decide to continue to serve under Lü Bu. And the reason is, Zhang Liao was not under Ding Yuan at the time. He was first in the eight captains of the West Palace, which was absorbed by He Jin after Jian Shuo's death, and then absorbed by Dong Zhuo following He Jin's death. So Zhang Liao was already serving under Dong Zhuo before Lü Bu even switched sides. So he would have no problem with Lü Bu killing Ding Yuan to join Dong Zhuo as well. And it was through their prior bond and their shared home province relationship that would help Zhang Liao get promoted through the ranks, which is also why Zhang Liao would end up sticking by Lü Bu until the very end. And now that we have Lü Bu's origin story all sorted out, we're going to end our episode here, as we'll continue next time with Lü Bu's first betrayal, 
and look at his new life serving under Dong Zhuo. So hopefully you all enjoy this episode, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.